want to start with a dream. Democratize access to knowledge, delivering a platform able to connect anyone with any kind of knowledge, making information ubiquitous, accessible, and easy to use. I know, I know. Any kind of knowledge seems like a huge goal, but give me the opportunity to explain you how. To begin our journey, please, close your eyes and let me be your guide. Imagine yourself walking in a park, the sound of the leaf being pushed by the wind. Mix it with voices from the crowd. And while you're walking, suddenly you recognize familiar faces. You can see Shakespeare talking with Einstein, while Leonardo is painting one of his incredible masterpieces. And now you can open your eyes. This is not a dream. It can happen now. We have all the technology we need and an immense quantity of data to share. And to be honest with you, you don't even need to go to a park. You can live the same experience from your home computer, in your classrooms, museums, or if you are lazy, directly from your sofa. And this will be the new Wikipedia. It will be emotional, interactive, ubiquitous, and accessible. So, with this goal in mind, we started our journey five years ago, when Giorgio, my colleague, that now is a backstage, dragged me to a crazy, brave, innovative project, Bring Back to Life Dante Alighieri. When I mention Bring Back to Life, you don't have to think about the Frankenstein novel where at the midnight we sneak into a cemetery and try to examine the body of Dante, that's creepy. You should think about a 3D persona, able to manage a dialogue, transfer emotions, and have its own knowledge. Our Dante, indeed, was able to talk about his private life, love, friendship, and even philosophy. Once I saw the reaction of the more than 50 classrooms in front of our Dante, I realized two things. First, we can do more. If we were able to bring back to life Dante, we can recreate any past, present, or even fictional character, and we can convey any kind of knowledge. And second, I understood that the technical profession at the end was not so important as the ability to create an emotional relationship. So, despite my technical background, I don't want to take too much time, too much of your time, talking about technical details. Let me focus only on two aspects. First, artificial intelligence, but it's a pretty buzzword today, and empathy. But first of all, a 3D persona. I mentioned 3D persona two times already. So basically, it's a visually, culturally, socially, and psychological reproduction of a real persona able to convey an advanced interaction, emotion, dialogue, and also to be preserved for fruition by future generations. We started with artificial intelligence and empathy. We used artificial intelligence to understand incoming questions and retrieve the best rational answer, or better, the knowledge associated with the answer. But honestly, rational sounds boring. So we decided to add emotions to our persona and the ability to understand the user need, empathy. So the persona now can understand incoming questions, retrieve the best knowledge, and also understand your needs. It could be your age, your language, and even your temporary or permanent limitations. And persona can use this data to create or adapt the perfect teaching style to you. It could be target, for example, or respond to your level of stress, to the attention span, or temporary or permanent disabilities. And this is the first big leap into the future. If I want to adapt my style to your need, I need to divide the knowledge from the way I convey it, so the didactic methodologies. So, let's make an example. When you read a book, or watching a video, or following an online course, 
Someone, usually the expert, decided not only the knowledge, but also the way you must use it. We really need to get rid of this old mechanism. We have to change it. And so we identified four different disruptive features to achieve our goal. The first one, tailor the assets around the customer from the way it will consume the knowledge to the price. Second, we need to change the whole hierarchical relationship like a Jedi and the Padawan, guru and follower. That's so old, that's so wrong. We need to evolve this mechanism, the relationship between the master and the apprentice. And also, we need to promote soft skills and critical thinking. And yes, there's a fourth one, but we will see it later. So, we are ready. We have four disruptive features, we have our Dante, and so we want to move from the small test we did with the 50 classroom before to the learning system. So we want to bring our technology into educational system. I know, what are you thinking about now? What could be the side effect of introducing such technology in schools? Are you planning to replace teachers? Honestly, no. And let me explain again why. Teacher are the perfect master to drive the democratic knowledge transfer because they have all the pedagogical expertise, competencies and sensibility to help students to take control over the learning process as well as learn soft skills. So let's say that for the next 5-10 years we will always need experts, teachers, to create and design innovative methodologies to target diverse users. After these five, ten years, maybe we, the tech guy, we will be good enough to create an artificial intelligence to dominate the world. Oh no, sorry, that was another speech. So, and, my fault. And AI is so powerful to take care of this task. But, so we are ready. We had an expert system before, and now we want to have a teachable, so it could learn, empathical tutor. And we are ready to test in schools, but there's still a missing piece. We need a great story to engage our students. And this is our story. A group of scientists received a message from outer space. After many tried to record it, they took a decision. We need to ask children for help. So they wrote an email to teacher asking to select a group of young humans to initiate the contact between the two races. As a first step, teachers went to classroom, read the email to the student, ask him if they want to help the scientist. Can you figure it out? You are a seven-year-old and your teacher is asking you, do you want to meet aliens? Yeah, students were so happy and enthusiastic. So the first cohort, around 150 students from Switzerland and Italy, from seven to nine years old, visited a space center near Milan for an epochal meeting between humans and aliens. Honestly, it was just an holographic theater. But to make the story more convincing and dramatic, we had to wear overall lab suits. The alien appeared remote as a full size hologram and never dangerous. The message it conveyed was, I fall in love with your beautiful blue planet and I need your help to transform myself in a human being to visit it. Before the meeting we had Mixed feeling, honestly. Yeah, for sure, there's a lot of anticipation, curiosity, happiness, but a bit of scare and fear. But what happened that day exceeded our expectation. Students were so excited for the meeting when, decide when, when they back home, they told their parent, alien exist, and I talk with them. So, once back to the classroom, we had to call down the students 
first of all, and the teachers ask students to decide what they would like to learn and transfer to the alien. In the meanwhile, students develop a friendship with the alien. Someone brought him food and clothes. And so they took care and took control over the learning process, suggesting not only the knowledge, so the favorite topics, but also the pace and the time for learning. They even suggested to make the experience more engaging, to transform the normal lesson into their favorite games, like board games and TV quizzes. They decided to teach the alien how to become human, but only with three different aspects, the physical aspects, emotions, and culture. So, they were so great to give the alien a lot of details about how to create emotions and how to convey them, and also how to behave when you're talking with a friend. And the alien learned from them and transformed itself accordingly, becoming an alien boy, still blue, but human. Teacher, we, uh, with different interviews, recognize that we achieved two results. On one side, students for sure were so excited about the new learning experience and we started talking with their friends and reported experience something like incredible, emotive and transporting and something completely new for them. But on the other side, students want to take more control to help their new shy friend. And so, we discussing with teachers best practices, problems, and even a new ideas to develop the next step in the alien evolution. So basically, the result we had, we were enough good to inc uh, insert this kind of technology into the learning process, not only to make it engaging and funny, but also to promote critical thinking and soft skills. But we don't want to limit ourselves to students, and lessons. So, thanks to International Space Medicine Consortium, our partner in the United States, we were able to create a 3D persona able to provide medical and psychological support. Another great example of knowledge to share. This persona can understand, as always, not, always, in, not only incoming question and create a, a dialogue, but also to understand your symptoms what you need, your facial expression, your voice prosody, and utilize this data to create a one-to-one -one tailored support and prescription. The AI in this scenario was able to create a dialogue using the previously acquired information, so the dialogue, and also using your symptoms, its own knowledge, psychological and medical knowledge, and also deductions. Let me try a small experiment. Let's talk with our three characters. Dante, what do you think about this technology? Questo arnese non mi si addice davvero. Piuttosto che per il suo agir, come arma lo tirerei contro un guelfo nero. You need to evolve yourself, Dante. I saw the way you worked with me, and we can be anything from an animal to your favorite superhero. I would love to be your superhero, with Einstein knowledge and, I can, also include your knowledge, the audience knowledge. Oh, I would love that. I am the perfect superhero. I can even fly. But, we can move forward with three characters, and... What if I say that we can create a platform able to collect my experiences, your experiences, the whole audience experiences to embrace basically all the human being? Knowledge is the key to elevate human condition. And we can identify the large part of the population that is in need of continuous and basic learning. We can include more than one billion of people, starting from the illiterate population, including all children out of the school system, and also anyone 
who's facing a problem you already solved. Do you remember when we started? We had a dream, a big one, democratize access to knowledge, and we identified a long list of features. And there was a fourth one, and it's you, your ability to share knowledge. So if you are here today, or you are listening to me on your home computer, on your mobile, from your classroom, or your offices, it basically means two things. First, you are experiencing a direct knowledge transfer from me to you in an open settings. And second, you are one of the lucky person who received an education. This call is about you, your ability to give back part of what you learn to the rest of the world. We can combine all these experiences together. And we can create a place where, where anyone and everywhere, everywhere can find an answer to their own problem. This will be the new Wikipedia. It will be accessible, democratized, ubiquitous, and inclusive. As the last slide, please let me thank my team. Without their support, and the knowledge they share with me, I can't be here today. Thank you.